So for those of you who watched my last video, you know I've got the Blue Yeti EB200P. There's been some um, some pretty big changes and upgrades over the last couple of weeks, so I thought I'd do an updated video and just show you what I've got going on. So next to my EB200P, I've purchased a few other Blue Yeti products. I talked about the enhanced DC charger in my last video, but I've now pur purchased a B230 expanded battery. So these are designed and intended for the AC Max, uh, and they actually have, they come in with an included link cable, and they integrate seamlessly into that system. But you can actually use them on uh, other products like the EB200. So they actually make a special cable, uh, which you can purchase separately. I got mine included with the battery, which is pretty handy. So basically it's got the, um, the battery link cable here on one end, but the other end, is an XT90 and that allows you to either connect it to the enhanced DC charger which you can then feed into the AC charge point on the EB200 or you can actually connect it up to the uh, PV photovoltaic input. Actually I have found that um, putting it onto the, the photovoltaic input does charge a bit faster. It typically charges at around 600 watts into the EB200P. The enhanced DC charger obviously has a max output of 500 watts. It also um, has a fan and other circuitry, so you know probably a little bit less efficient, uh, although not by a lot. It's only about 10 to 15 watts uh, loss there from what I can see with the external meters that I've been using. So I've got a bit of a, a arrangement here inside the house. I've got a couple of external meters. Last time I spoke about this external meter here um, that I'm using to meter the uh, photovoltaic input, the power coming off the solar panels. A little bit cloudy um, here today, so we're getting a bit of intermittent sunshine. I've had a bit of an upgrade to the solar panels as well, so I will take you downstairs later on and, uh, and show you the, the, the new panels. But just as I show you, the clouds are sort of coming out a little bit, uh, and you can see here now that we are um, up to, uh, well, for a moment there, we're up to max power, max injection into the PV side of things. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to utilize these external meters uh, in my demonstrations today because I've had a bit of a uh, bit of a setback in that the um, touch screen for the Blue Eddy has failed. It still works. I, I can actually still hear it beeping, as you might have just noticed. So if you um, if you sort of have an idea of where you're pressing on the screen, it will still do things, but there's no display. Um, so I've, I've been in contact with Blue Yeti and uh, I've sent them a video of, uh, of the issue and uh, I'm just waiting to hear back from them now about uh, returning this unit. A um, bit disappointing but anyway it's under warranty and I'm sure Blue Yeti will look after me there and in the interim it, it does still function at least. So uh, yeah, it doesn't just means I can't, uh, I can't see what's going on. And there you go, you can see uh, 900 watts. So that's not too bad uh, uh, for uh, quarter to nine in the morning. Ding box, and uh, I'll create a, a video, uh, a guide on, on how I've done that. So this secondary meter that I've got here, I can I can use it in two ways. Uh, basically, this it's metering whatever comes off these two sources at this point. All right. So at the moment, it's uh, metering what's coming in off the secondary array. And so I can see the power and I can see the uh, accumulated energy over time. At night, when I want to switch to using the EB230, um, I actually at the moment have to physically disconnect that and plug in the, the, the battery source. I can then use this meter then to meter what's actually coming from the B230. So I can see how much current and what wattage, and I can also measure the, uh, the collected energy. Um, so I can sort of see the capacity that's being used overnight. Initially, I put these in just as a, you know, a bit of interest. I had them and I thought it would be uh, of value. But actually, since the screen on the, uh, on the EB200P uh, has failed, uh, these external meters have become absolutely critical uh, because I can't see the charge state on the EB200P. Uh, 
Um, so the only way I really know when it's fully charged is uh, is basically when I can see these meters here um, shut down because the uh, the EB200P has turned off its charging circuits. So um, yeah, without them I'd be really really flying blind. So let me take you downstairs and uh, I'll show you what I've got happening down there with the uh, with the solar panels. Okay, so here we are. So a couple of other things that I sort of just wanted to sort of take you through. Obviously, this is a very manual system. If you have the AC Max, you use the standard link cable, and this came with the battery. And that contains all the comms lines and, uh, and uh, voltage lines that you'll need. So the AC Max will manage all of the charging and discharging of the EB230 on, uh, for you. Basically, it's set and forget. But I haven't got an AC Max, so I've had to work with what I've got. And, uh, and I don't, don't mind the manual nature of things. Obviously, I like to tinker and play around. So that does mean I have to step in and, and basically be the, I suppose, if you will, a pseudo battery management system. So how do I use this system? Okay, so during the day, we've got good sun production as we do now. Uh, my solar panels have reached a point where they can provide enough power to uh, run my day-to-day -day needs here in the home office. Uh, they can charge up the EB200P. So once I sort of see that charged in the morning, and that usually happens at around 8, 8.30 or so, and the panels are producing a, a decent amount, what I'll do then is I'll actually start to charge the, uh, the B230. Okay, because I use the, e, the B230 at night as my primary battery. So typically in the morning I'll come in and the B230 is flat or just about to go flat. That's around 5, 5.30 in the morning. So I'll turn that off then, shut that down, and we'll operate on the battery out of the EB200P for probably another two to three hours until the solar panels come on. Solar panels will come on on both arrays and they will charge up the EB200P and uh, normally obviously you can check the screen, can't do that at the moment, so I just wait to see um, the system sort of shut down and, and indicate that it's fully charged. Once we're able to produce around five to 600 watts in, in good sunshine, that's when I'll turn on um, the DBAC charging brick and I'll run that off the inverter circuit. So uh, our coming from the EB200P, that's where I've currently got it plugged in at the moment on that power board. So you can see here we're on and we're actually connected to the uh, B230 and we are currently charging. Uh, so the reason that I wait until we're able to produce five, 600 watts odd is that I don't wanna just move power around, right? I don't wanna be just moving what's in the battery on this side uh, into this battery here because you're not really gaining anything all you're doing is just moving energy from one battery to another and obviously you're going to lose a little bit of energy in that transfer so I want to make sure that I'm not drawing down on the battery as such uh, to run that that power brick now my home office here when everything's on all my screens uh, all my computers for work uh, I'm usually pulling about 350 watts so if I then add the power brick um, to that you know we can we can take that up to say 750 to 800 watts so I sort of need that much power coming into the system in order to be actually charging this other battery rather than just pulling power from that battery to put into here. So it is a little bit of a balancing act. I mean, I'm, I'm not too you know worried about it. Like at the moment, the power's dropped a little bit to you know, 230, so I'm, I'm not gonna stop it. As long as overall um, we're in the positive, we're in the, in the black and we're not in the red, um, then it's not too bad. I do actually also have a little bit of power coming in off the secondary array in the morning. That secondary array, array at this time of the day in full sun, you saw before about 100 watts. But as the day goes on and the sun moves over, that secondary array will actually start to really ramp up. And actually, when we get to you know around two or three o'clock in the afternoon, it can actually produce enough power to actually drive the DC charger, the enhanced DC charger up to full power. And that full power output is actually 500 watts. So it can actually put 500 watts into the uh, B230. 
uh, which is more than what the AC power brick can do. So, you know, if we've got good sun, I'll, uh, I'll turn the AC power brick on and, uh, and use um, the two arrays into the EB200P and, and charge that way. But uh, come the afternoon, if we're still wanting to put a bit of charge into this battery, maybe the morning was cloudy and I didn't, uh, didn't have enough power, I can actually put the enhanced DC charger directly into the B230 and, uh, and charge at, uh, at the full 500 watts, which is faster than what the AC power brick can do. Uh, and that seems to work quite well, generally uh, in full sun, even partial cloud over the last few days. Uh, I'm generally able to run the entire home office all day without mains, charge up the EB200P to full and the B230 to full, uh, and that's usually you know by you know two o'clock in the afternoon earlier if we uh, we have full uninterrupted sun throughout the entire day. So uh, yes, it's a it's a bit of a manual system, and it does require uh, me to be here and and to be uh, available. Um, because we are using the EB200P in sort of a, I suppose, a non-intended way to, to sort of work with this, you actually have to put the EB230 um, uh, the B230 into a special mode. So at the moment, this is just normal on and it's charging and you can use um, the uh, DC side as well. But for this to actually work, there's no comms lines from um, the head unit to the battery. So in order to get it to start discharging the battery onto, you know, either into the enhanced DC charger or onto the photovoltaic input, you actually have to hold the button down until it starts to flash. And that actually puts it into a special mode um, where it doesn't need the communication lines to actuate. It just comes on and then starts to output power. Um, and so when you do that, when it's in that sort of a mode, I've noticed it doesn't like to charge at the same time. When I've actually connected up charging, um, it's actually shut down the output and begun to charge, but it shut down the output. Um, so obviously um, not ideal there. So I found that when you're actually using the extended battery to, to power the head unit, um, you can't really charge it at the same time. Uh, and that's okay for for my purposes here. That's that's really not uh, not necessary. So uh, look, there's a lot of different aspects to this, and you do need to be a little bit mindful if you are going to run an array like this and and get the most out of it, particularly efficiency wise. Otherwise, you'll just wind up you know pushing power back and forth, and uh, and you can actually find that will impact your efficiencies quite a bit. Okay, so down here at one part of my array from a previous video, you might have uh, you might have recalled that I've got um, two sets of two here that face north. Uh, I've actually upgraded these though. I previously had some second-hand panels, and now I've actually gone out and bought some brand new ones. So these are JA Solar 390 watt each. So I've got two of them here, and I've got another two on the the back of the house, which also face north. Because I, I, you may recall from my previous video, I have a switch there where I can set them to either parallel or solar, or sorry, parallel or series. I've actually um, only been running them in parallel because um, putting them all into series brings it right up to the 150 volts uh, open circuit, which is right on the verge of what the Blue Yeti um, can handle. So I've just left them in parallel for the time being and they work really, really well. So they're effectively a um, 1600 watt um, array. Um, so over paneling, because they can only take 900 into the Blue Yeti, um, but over paneling works really, really well. It means I can get maximum production early in the morning and later into the afternoon. But uh, coming into summer, we're getting a lot more sun time in the Western sky. And, uh, and that's almost at uh, 90 degrees to um, the panels here. So uh, we're really not um, getting a lot of uh, a lot of energy in the afternoons. So what I've done with the older um, panels that I had, I've actually set up uh, a secondary array. So the the 390 watts, the four 390 watts are my primaries, and I've set these. Uh, these are two 260 watt panels, and I've set these up here so they can face uh, west. So at the moment, you saw before this array is only generating about 100 watts. It's uh, it's still in the shade here. But come the afternoon, from about two o'clock onwards, um, these are in full sun and, and actually um, produce about 500 watts because that enhanced DC charger 
can only output 500 watts as a maximum. Um, so this actually produces a lot of power in the afternoon, which is great and just extends the runtime. So for both these arrays, I'm actually using um, some painting uh, trestle uh, stands that I got from Aldi. And uh, these actually work really, really well. Uh, they might get a bit rusty over time, but they are only $30 each. And uh, height adjustable, so I can actually change the height on these if I wish. So I've got four of them. And I've got two here for this array, and, uh, and then I'm using two down here uh, on the primary. And, uh, and that just keeps them off the fence. And uh, actually it was sort of perfect. The, um, the bar here is, uh, is just right to sort of go in here and lock in. I haven't actually screwed them on yet because um, it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty firm, you know, so. Not a bad system. All right, I'll take you into the house and show you a few other things. All right, so this is the other panels. Um, so these are the other um, 390 watts that I've got here. So these two uh, are in parallel with the other two that you saw facing uh, north. The secondary array that you saw facing west, I've uh, I had these other panels here and I just thought, well, why not throw them in? Um, so I've got these sitting here and these are also uh, facing uh, north. So the secondary array is a bit of a mixed bag. It's got um, 500 watts facing north and 500 watts facing, uh, facing west. But I've actually got them wired up in parallel, so the arrays can work independently. So during the day, when, uh, when these are producing more power, they can do so independently. And then in the afternoon, when the western facing ones come into their own, they can also generate uh, their own power. So I'll take you inside and just show you how I've got things set up. So this is the, um, the isolator for the secondary array. So I've actually got the, the two panels coming into here. So you can see this is the one from the western side and this is the one from the northern side. And I've actually just got them paralleled up into the, uh, into the uh, isolator here. So it's got four ports at the bottom and then I've got the two outputs and actually inside there are a couple of bridging uh, um, sort of brackets that come uh, U-links that actually come with the isolator. And so the parallel is done internally to the array. I had thought about whether or not I would do that separately and I've actually got a battery isolator which I'm thinking about putting over here. I'll show it to you. So this is, this is it. And if you have a bit of a look on it, um, it's actually intended for a battery system, but um, it's rated for you know two to three hundred amps, so I'm sure it'd be perfectly fine. But you have either an off, so isolation. You can either then pick one or two, so you can switch between the arrays if you wish, or then you can have them operating in uh, in parallel. So I might throw that in there yet. I just uh, I just haven't got around to that so far at the moment. Uh, just sort of uh, configured things and just seeing how it's all coming together. <laughs> 